Senator from Oklahoma. Madam President, the uh, first last week, a uh, floor speech that I gave on the first common sense for common defense, I highlighted the fact that that uh, our competitors have increased their own military spending and focused on modernization. And we're going to have to do the same. Now, I'm talking about, when I talk about competitors, I'm talking about China and Russia. I think this president did a good job of outlining the, our national defense system uh, and putting it in different categories. Because when you talk about China and Russia, not many people are aware of this, but China and Russia uh, have, have increased all during the years that we have decreased and they've actually caught up in some cases, actually uh, uh, passed us. Now our men and women in uniform are outstanding of representations of what's right in America. They drive and, and, uh, and determination is, is the reason. The uh, uh, United States of America has the honor of being a leader of the free world. Uh, that honor, however, is the product of hard work, not birthright. Uh, we earned it, but over the last 10 years, our military supremacy has slowly degraded. General Dunford, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, has acknowledged that our qualitative and quantitative uh, advantage has eroded. Now, toward the end of the Obama administration, in the, in the case of many of our systems, like our brigade combat teams, uh, where only 35% of those could be deployed because of what happened to the defense budget and our maintenance capabilities. The same thing happened to our uh, Army aviation brigades. The same thing happened to our F-18s. You know, it's, it's the Marines that, that fly the F-18s, and we only had 30% of those that could be deployed toward the end of the Obama administration. Now, our uh, this, this is something that people are not aware of, and if there's ever any question, if you would take, and this is very significant, Madam President, we need to pay attention to this, because if you take constant, do constant uh, by, uh, dollars, uh, defense spending, drop $200 billion from 2010 to 2015. Now, that was the, the last five years of the Obama administration. In 2010, the budget was 794, and then five years later, it dropped down to 586. That's unprecedented, even during the Korea, or after the Korean War. Uh, it didn't drop that, uh, that much. But nonetheless, it did, and it's never happened before, and we have to make up for it now. And that's exactly what we're doing. Our fiscal year 2018 budget brought it back up to $700 billion. The 2019 uh, uh, budget brought it back up to uh, two, uh, uh, 2000, from 2000, uh, 2016 billion dollars. And we anticipate, and it's been mentioned several times in our 2020 budget, it's gonna be around, around uh, $750 billion. And, uh, we have a slide here that puts it in a little different perspective because it shows uh, we didn't, you know, start. As you can see from the slide, at the end of the Cold War, we had about the same number of fighter aircraft as our adversaries uh, of that time. That was Russia and, and uh, China. And it's very clear on this, uh, the, the, the orange are the third generation fighters, the uh, blue, the fourth generation fighters. So it shows now we're getting into the fifth generation. But they were uh, actually, at that time, we were well, way ahead of them. And uh, this, is, this is a thing of the past now. Um, uh, while we had the same amount, we were still superior because our aircraft were newest and most capable in the world. Our fighter aircraft, in fact, most of our military equipment was better, more modern, more effective than the Russians had or than the, the Chinese had. Now that's changed. Now uh, during the uh, period of time, we went through about 10 years of not increasing the quality and the kind, but, but and the numbers stayed the same. So we got in a, to a position where many of the things that the Chinese and the Russians had were better than what we had. Now, as demonstrated on the chart, our fighter force reduced nearly 50% in total numbers over the last 25 years, and we failed to modernize. The Secretary of the Air Force, Heather Wilson, said, our Air Force is too small to do what the nation asks. So uh, not only is it too small, but the average age of our 
aircraft is now uh, at 28 years old. Uh, how many of us in here drive a car that's 28 years old? In 1990, we brought over 500 aircraft a year. 1990, 500 aircraft a year. But recently, that number has been reduced down 50 a year. We just assume. You know, when I go out and talk to people in my state of Oklahoma and anywhere around the country, there is this assumption that somehow we are, we have the very best of everything. And that used to be the case. That became the case after World War II. But then during the last 10 years is when things uh, dropped down. We're going to have to do better because at this rate, it would take us over 40 years to modernize a fleet that is already too old and too small. Meanwhile, our adversaries have transformed their aircraft fleets with modernization programs and increased their overall size and capabilities. In fact, Chinese and Russian air forces have recapitalized and are now or soon will be fielding aircraft with capability matching our own, uh, but at a much faster rate. So if they get to the point where we are in terms of modernization, they're already way ahead of us in terms of numbers. According to the Chief of Staff of the Air Force, General Goldfein, if we take no action, both the Russian and Chinese forces will be bigger and more technologically advanced to us. And we know this is true. Uh, artillery is measured in terms of uh, rapid fire and range. And that's where we are getting, uh, we're, we're falling behind them. The problem is not just the Air Force, but the Army, likewise, has gotten smaller and less capable in the same decade, specifically in terms of long-range fires, as defined as tubed artillery and tactical missiles. Uh, you can see the same trend. Now, these are, this is our artillery system, the three different types of our artillery. But you can see now that as time has gone by, we have actually fallen behind. If you look at us over here, the total of 28, uh, 2,886, as opposed to 22,000, the Russians, and 10,000, the Chinese. And so that, the numbers are there, and we, we know that's happening, and we know that it, it's taking place as we speak. And the, uh, in the last 25 years, we've kind of rested on the advantage that we had th things that were better than they had. While our adversaries have also reduced the amount of long-range fires over the same period of time, they have significantly modernized their force. And we are now in a situation where both of these countries, that's Russia and China, um, not only have more artillery than us, theirs is better than ours. Uh, General Mark Milley, the Army Chief of Staff, said, in terms of artillery, the Army is, out, is outgunned and outranged by our adversaries. Unfortunately, people don't know this, and people are gonna to have to know this and know what happened to us in the last decade. One can look at the devastating results from Russia's action against the Ukrainian army. We all remember in 2014, that they made it possible through the modernization of their artillery systems. And the results were there. They won, they inflicted damage. Recognizing the problem is normally the first step in uh, developing an acceptable solution. In uh, fiscal year uh, 18 and fiscal year 19 budgets, they've got us back in the right direction. But we have gone up in, um, in fiscal year 18 to $700 billion for a defense budget. In fiscal year 19, seven, uh, 760, uh, 16 uh, billion dollars. So we're on the road to recovery. and We recognize that the people in this body know what's happened to our uh, abilities and our superiority in these areas that is no longer there. The, uh, the bipartisan, this, this is kind of interesting. Uh, we had a hearing on this the other day. Of all of the, the, the presentations that I've heard, the uh, assessment and recommendation of the National Defense Strategy Commission. That's what this book is right here. Uh, this was put together just a few years ago, and they have actually made these assessments, and they've come to the conclusion that if we want to do something, okay, you, you'll get their attention in a minute, Madam President. The Senate will be in order. Good job, and that's coming from a brand new senator. Uh, I appreciate that very much. Uh, 
And anyway, what they come up with on this thing is a, a, a formula as to what it's going to take us right now and the foreseeable future. They say all of our defense budgets coming up are going to have to be somewhere between an increase of 3% and 5% and above inflation. And of course, that's exactly what these three years uh, will do. So we are making headway in, in that respect. The, the, this, this, uh, this growth projection is also one that our Secretary of Defense, as well as our Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, say is going to be necessary for us to just get back up even with and competitive with both Russia and China. You know, I can remember not long ago being in the South China Sea and watching China do their, they're actually building islands. No, it's, it's not legal, but they do it anyway. And if you look at what's on these seven islands out there, it's as if they're preparing for World War III. And our adversaries and our allies, our allies in the South China Sea are very much concerned about this and uh, as to where we, you know, wh whose side are they gonna be on if this happens? So anyway, we don't want to shortchange our uh, national security. We fully implement the national defense strategy that's found in this book in a timely manner by avoiding continuing resolutions and eliminating the threat of uh, sequestration. You know, continuing resolutions is something where if we don't get along in this body, we don't pass our appropriation bills as we're supposed to pass them, then we end up uh, uh, passing a continuing resolution that continues what we've done in the previous year. We can't continue to do that. So we are, uh, the, the already widening gap with Russia and Chinese will only grow faster if we don't change our behavior, and that's exactly what we plan to do. We need to fix this, and we're going to do it. With that, uh, Madam President, I yield the floor.